Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Hey guys, so I think that we are now streaming live. I have a little bit of feedback. Is somebody, does somebody have their phone? You can turn down the volume. All right. It takes a it takes a few minutes for it to roll over on Facebook. Assalamualaikum, everybody. Welcome. Waalaikumsalam. <laughs> Welcome to those that are joining. Assalamualaikum. Please give your salams on the live. I still hear a little bit of feedback, guys. I'm not sure if anybody has their Facebook on or up. Assalamualaikum. Hey, family. Okay. Hey. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Welcome to the Dope Muslim Woman Podcast. This is your host. This is your girl, Sabrina Mills. I would like to welcome you to our first Saturday Live on Super excited and nervous because I never did a Saturday live, so I don't know how it's going to go. But inshallah, it, um, we wanted to welcome you guys. As you enter in, please give your salam so we can shout you out. And there, any if there's anyone we need to shout out, let's go ahead and give some salam, return some salams. Sure. Assalamualaikum, brother Dawu, sister Zakia, Farasha, Zahra. Mm -hmm. We have Saudia, sister Prissy, Ebony. Everybody's joining on time. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thank you guys to our timely folks. Well, alhamdulillah, we're going to get started. So welcome to the Dope Muslim Woman Podcast. I am super excited. We are here talking about the journey to stay married. And mm -hmm. I am um, very humbled and happy to have Veronique, our, my co-host, back here today. Mashallah, I miss you, girl. I miss you, too. I'm happy to be here. Alhamdulillah. Everybody loves you because, you know, you be thorough with your comments. You don't miss it. i trying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for returning. And I am super humbled to introduce this next couple. This couple is near and dear to me personally. I've known them for some years, and I've always personally admired their relationship, and I'll get into why in a little bit. Um, but they've been married for 26 years. Um, the sister in front, 26 years, the sister in front of me, she's a mother of seven children and a grandmother of four children, um, mashallah, and she's super amazing. She's been in the community for decades. Everybody knows our beloved sister, Doreen Jackson. So, alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam, wa Happy to be here. Happy to see you, girl. And alhamdulillah, I am super humbled to introduce our next brother. He is an author of one of my favorite books. It's called Her Justice, which can be found on Amazon. So I would strongly recommend that you go ahead and go get it. Um, he is also, again, the fa father of seven, grandfather of four grandchildren, Brother Nasheed Jackson. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for having me. Really. Thank you guys for being here. Alhamdulillah. So I'm super excited to talk about this because, you know, when we <laughs> when I crafted my episodes, I kind of focused on um, some of the aspects that are not as pretty in our community, which is the pain of divorce, the pain of toxic relationships, the pain of abuse, those type of things that we have a lot of taboos around. Um, but as we moved into this next sort of phase in our um, season, we wanted to talk about the journey of love, the journey of relationships and the journey of marriage, what it was the real. And um, I was saying on my live that um, I was really particular about wanting you guys because I feel like you guys, mashallah, show up very authentically. So that's why, mashallah, I just wanted to really have an authentic dialogue with a real couple. So I appreciate you guys for being here. I'm dead last. Are you ready? <laughs> I mean, is the audience ready? Is the question. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, let's go. Let's get it in. Let's get it right. Let's just let's start off real calm, brother. We're going to start off real calm. So, All right, I'm just going to die straight in. So many of us, like like myself, enter into it. When I've entered into my marriage, uh, we think of like the pie in the sky, the fairy tale dream, what it would be like. We sort of fantasize it, uh, especially as women, we do that. Um, but marriage isn't always, well, it typically isn't the fairy tale, right? Um, the happily ever after with a person of our dreams doesn't it doesn't always end up that way. It takes some real work. It is really about the journey. Can you speak a little bit about the this journey of marriage? And can you start from the beginning as far as actually choosing a potential partner? And I don't know if you want to start with your story of how you guys met or chose each other, but if you could just drop a little bit of oh, yeah, I take I take this one. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna tell you how we met. Uh, I was work. We was, we was working at Checkers. 
you know, checkers fast food joint. Yeah, yeah. I was working at checkers. Um, at the time, I was 17, and I couldn't, like, I had to leave at a certain time of the day. Like, okay. you know what I'm saying? I, when, at nighttime, you know, you earn the age, you can't stay. So I had to leave, I think it was like 10 o'clock or something like that. Like, and, um, and I had done that for a few months. One night I had to leave, and it was short, because she was a closer, right? So I was working with her. She was a closer, and she could stay, because she's older than me. Y'all, she older than me. She older than me. I just, I'm, I'm putting that out there. So they, it, the one night, they 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 was going to kick me out, and they was like, nah. She was like, nah, he good. Let him work. Let him stay and work, right? So anyway, that's how we formed the relationship. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Okay. Premeditated. A statutory rape. That's what it was. Premeditated. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, listen. I mean, nothing happened when I was 17, but she told me later that she couldn't wait till I got 18. Premeditated. <laughs> a statutory rape. You're a fool. It's a fool. No, what I'm saying is that's that's how our relationship started, though. Like for real. Like, um, you guys weren't Muslim, so let's just we want to clear that up. Yes, no, we weren't, we weren't Muslim, right. and you know we worked together, mm -hmm. and so we were we were always talking about the relationships we were in. Mm -hmm. You know, just you know, I would tell him what I was going through. You know, he would tell me what he was going through, and he was just. He's that type of person. He's honest with you from day one. It was always honesty about, you know, who he was, the type of person he, you know, he's not that type of person to hide nothing. And I think that is what attracted me to him. It was the honesty. You know what I'm saying? It's like there was no whole bars. Y'all see, it's no whole bars in what he says. He gonna say whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's it's the honesty that attracted me to him. I mean, I look I, when I look at it now. I mean, I, I couldn't say then. I was young, you know. I had somebody older than me, you know. She was a little fly, you know. Talking about, I was like, yeah, I'm. I got little mama, but it was her her family, like, cause when I met her, she had two children. Okay. Yeah. She had two children, and um, I, I don't know. I can say that I really wanted a family since I was like thirteen. Wow. I can remember making uh, I can remember making. Cause my my parents weren't there for me, so I said to myself that I'm going to be there for my kids, and then Allah Allah has allowed me to do that. And looking back at looking back at it, that's what I can say that attracted me to her. The fact that she was a mother. That, yeah, that she was a mother, and she was a Your great. Priority. Yeah, she 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 was a great mother. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we got together, and she um. Got pregnant with my daughter, who's 26 years old now. She's 26 years old, 26 years old. And at the same time, at the same time, her and I was messing, you know, she was coming over to the apartment and we were we was reading Quran. We was reading the Bible, we was reading Quran. I was in I was in that stage of being introduced to Islam. Um, so yeah, so at the same time I met her, I I, I got Islam. Y'all know that song um Shade got. Uh, there must have been an angel by my side. Yeah. I, when I think, when I hear that song, like it means so much because it was it was Islam that I I feel that Allah guided me to Islam with an angel, and I feel that Allah guided me to her uh, at the same time. Mashallah, that's beautiful. Mashallah, Allah, Mashallah. Okay, very neat. Um, where are we good with comments? You want to go? Um, we do have a quick question. Somebody wants to know what's the age difference. Ooh. Only oh, she wanna um, no 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 she she five years older than me. We we have an argument about that. She say four, I say five. I, if I was born in 70 and he was born in 74, that's four years. Okay. <laughs> I was born in late 74. It was four years and some months, brother. So we're gonna go with the ring. <laughs> that's five. That's five. Okay. okay. So um, all right, there, Nick. So we um that. Okay, so one of the issues that we hear from couples is always about um, communication, the issue of communication. And when, you know, we're talking with each other, we're kind of already thinking about what we're going to say next versus actually listen to the person who's trying to communicate to you. So can you offer some insight on how you navigate difficult conversations and appro communi approach communication as a couple? Okay, so I'll take this one too. Um, so... 
our communication, I can say, and I, I ain't talked to her about this, but our communication have changed. Like all I do is listen now. Now, only in our relationship, all I do is listen and say, yes, yes, dear, yes, dear. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. And to yes, me, that, that's, that means like he's really <laughs> Everything but, yes. when he say when he say yes, dear, he ain't listening. Oh. But it seems like that's that's but that's but it's okay though. Like our relationship, I guess, is established. But what it was, our relationship was, you know, we were, we would talk for hours, just just us. And it, it 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 was like that in the beginning of our relationship, through the middle of our relationship. But I don't know. May I don't know what happened, but um, but we we would talk. Mm -hmm. I would listen. And I, I, she would talk to me, you know, it was, yeah, we, we would talk. We listen. And I, and I think that listening is like a lot of people look at us like we crazy because 26 years of marriage, 28 years of being together, we ain't never have an argument, y'all. Really? Never. Never. No. Now, just because we never had an argument, it doesn't mean that I agree with everything that he says, and it doesn't mean that he agrees with everything I say. Mm -hmm. But that's the whole point is people don't listen to each other. We, when he's talking, what the first thing you want to do is how you going to come back at him. That's mm -hmm. not listening to somebody. That's not really listening to what they're saying. So we we listen to each other, and we're not trying to come back to hurt each other. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. That's it's none of that. It's none of I, mm -mm. I. I I don't. If I say something hateful to you, I really don't deal with you. Like for me, love is forever. Once I say I love you, regardless of you know we fall out with each other, I'm still gonna love you, and I'm not gonna do anything to hurt you. And I think that's it. Like uh, when when folks get into get into a relationship. I mean, really evaluate that person to see if you do love them because love is forever, for real. Like how, for me, it's like, how can you love somebody today and then hate them tomorrow? I mean, it happens. I know it happens all the time, but to me, it just don't make sense because, and I think I learned that, like, hold on. Can I share a story with y'all? Okay. All right, just, just real quick, real quick. So when I was like 16, so I've been on my own since, not on my own, but making my own decisions since I was like 14, 14, 15. So when I was 16, um, in the hood, there was this girl who was, they say was crazy. So they told me if I just say that I love her, she'll give me whatever I want. Man, it, I, it, that lady got scary to me because she, it really, she really, when I said I love her to her, like it, her, my words, I don't know, it did something to her. And she became like clingy and she wanted to be around me all the time. And, and I, and I and I, I really didn't hurt her, so it hurt me that I was hurting her. You know what I'm saying? Like it hurt me that I was hurting her. So from that, that was a lesson for me never to play with that word love at, at all. Wow, that's powerful. And you know, honestly, this is why I wanted you guys on because what I noticed, and I'm just gonna bring this segue this into the audience earlier than expected. But actually, brother Nasheed and sister Doreen are actually in polygyny. Um, and one of the things I really admired about them very early on is like the authenticity and honesty that it seems like they have with each other from the door. Like it, it just doesn't seem like there's there's no secrets. Like it's just like sort of this sort of open communication. Um, would you say that that is something you guys are very intentional about or would you just attribute that to your personalities individually or were you intentional about this sort of open book type of honest type of relationship? From the beginning, it's us. Yeah, I think I just say it's us. Yeah, it's us. <laughs> it's, because before we had a relationship, we we established a friendship in that in that check in that restaurant. Like we were friends first. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like we and um, yeah. So I would say it, it's just us. Yeah, it's just us. And you would recommend? Is that a recommendation that you have? Because I think we don't really do that as Muslim couples, or at least I don't think no. we're raised to be friends first because was it supposed to be appropriate? But is it's that a recommendation? It's unpopular, but I say that we should stop. We should stop. The way our community is, like, um, if I hurt, if I marry somebody and I hurt her, there's no one to hold me accountable for hurting her. You know what I'm saying? Like in our community, like we're too spread out, we're too spaced out. So I would say, and it's unpopular, like I said, stop having sex on the night of the wedding. 
like for real get, get into that marriage and get to know that person first mm. like oh, I mean, oh, I I hold on Paul, okay. like, yeah i've never heard that before so okay so you get married don't have sex on the first night you're saying date for a while how long was yeah. like, That's it. Like, That's because one let me tell you something when you get married and this is what i noticed with people you as as muslim it's hard see we weren't muslim so we were able to get that friendship you know what i'm saying right. as muslim you know it's no dating you know the friendship thing so how can you really get to know this person because people put on airs people people playing games man people don't yeah. keep it real they and don't that, that's a problem you know what i'm saying but if you get married and you hold off on that sex build a relationship with each other that's not with that because once 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 you have that sex it's like boom we marry life goes on where's the where do you, you don't build that friendship that friendship is gone so you need you know nowhere you start having children life goes on work all it is get to know each other get Absolutely. to know each other without that make it where you know when you get to know where you really want to have sex with this person not just that desire of i need to um you know i need to yeah i need to get these rocks off so let me just go ahead and hold off on that so that i can get to know you and the reason me wanting to have sex with you is different because you're my friend you know we're building this relationship on it absolutely like i said it's unpopular because of the prophet Sassalam said you know on, you should do it on that night I, I and you know i don't want to go of course that's what the prophet Sassalam said it's just that our community is not set up in a way where we can hold each other accountable. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a, lot, a lot of sisters don't have fathers or uncles. They they got the brother from the masjid to be their wali. Mm -hmm. And after they get married, you know, the, the, the wali says it's all on you now. Like that's that's your wife now. You know, you got to deal with that. Nobody's there to hold that brother or sometimes a sister accountable. You know what I mean? That's yeah. I mean as, a, as, a, as a community, we need to like really think about restructuring the way we get married. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's powerful. Ernie, did we have any questions or comments around that? I, I saw a couple of um, emojis go up. Just saying it, that's very interesting and well said, and you know, people never thought about it like that. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah, you're right. It, it would be a popular. So, are you saying that forging a friendship as Muslim? Because I think that's what a lot of us are kind of doing now. Is sort of, I mean. You know, it's trying to establish the um, friendship before we actually get married. But I know that's a danger zone. So are you saying that is you would recommend go ahead and get married, make it halal, but build a friendship? Right. Yeah. Friendship. I mean, because I mean, some sometimes our desires are this too strong. And, you know, if you're building a friendship, if you're building a friendship on, on the outside of marriage, you can get yourself in some trouble. You know what I mean? Mm. You go ahead and get married. And uh, have have a friendship with inside that marriage. And I'm listen. I'm talking from inside of a marriage, so a yeah. 26 year marriage. So <laughs> easier said than done, right? Easier said than done. <laughs> it, it sounds it, it sounds something like easy to do, but I'm I'm it's, I'm sure it's difficult. But I, I'm I think that it would be a benefit for you know uh, a lot of single mothers, you know, divorce. I, I think it'll be a, a benefit for that. But for, you know. Brother Ashi, you know, actually, the, the immigrant Muslims do that when they do the contract mm -hmm. signing. They call it like their engagement, but they sign the contract, which is technically uh -huh. the nikah, and then they don't consummate for a time. Like I, I know several people that have done it that way, and they date. And I mean, just look up, not in Iran, but we need to get that popping for real, seriously, because it's yeah, yeah, man, it's, it's just a lot of just marriages. I mean, I mean, it happens. I mean, Allah says, you know, we can't divorce. It happens, but it's just a lot going on. It's a lot. It is a lot. And let, me, let me bring in this question just because we're on this topic. Um, a sister Tiffany said, "What are some suggestions on restructuring restructuring the process?" Um, I mean, I think it's it it, it's, it has to be like a contract. Like, uh, it has to be written in a contract that we're not going to have sex until blah blah squad. You know what I mean? Um, restructuring the cons, cons, con contract of marriage. And both, of course, both parties need to be in agreement. Um, but if anything happens while you're in the marriage, you know, you 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 good, you halal, you know. Um, you think black men are going to agree? To, I'm just going to ask you. You think black brothers are agree are going to agree to that, brother Nashi? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm, I don't, but that, that's something that I'm working on. Like I'm really, I'm working on the younger group to, 
teach them how to have the control if i can say that I'm, I'm trying to tell them you know what i mean like you get out of your desires get out of that get a woman is a lot more than just you know some sex for sex she is she's a lot more for sex than sex she she has a brain she she has emotions you get to a, a man needs to get to know all of that before you really get into it you know get yeah get into that yeah yeah. Wow. Well. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to segue, in, I'm going to segue into this. So, um, I mentioned that you guys, okay. So I wanted to ask about the polygyny piece, right? Because I think we had a discussion around it and a lot of people, one of the things when we had a brother, we had different people on talking about polygyny. We had a sister, we had a brother, but we didn't have a couple actually talk about it. Um, could you help us understand um, you know, how you guys navigated or even made that decision collectively, not collectively, we don't know, to participate in polygyny as a, or Nashi, you know, participate in it. What are, Doreen, you want to go? You want me to go? Okay. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, my, my opinion on it is it's not for everybody. Okay. All men cannot handle it. You know what I'm saying? It's allowed because there are men who can handle it. You know what I'm saying? There mm -hmm. are men who can handle it. And if they upfront and honest with women, women from the jump, it'll, you know, it'll be, it'll make everything um, smoother and easier. Now, um, I don't even know how, how long you've been married. It's been almost 10 years. Almost. So he's been almost 10 years. Um, this is the second time he was married before. And with that one, I suggested that he should marry the sister. You know, uh, brothers, don't allow your <laughs> wife to suggest the woman to for you to marry. Do not. That's I mean, I know it sounds like a blessing. Oh, she ooh, she she did this. She she said that I can marry. Don't get hype on that, man. Because that's a person that that's a person that I like. Hey, I think she'll be good, but that doesn't mean that they'll be that's good right. together. Because it's your wife, not her wife. That's right. It's your wife. You know what I mean? So, okay, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, so that was an open. You guys had that open dialogue about this from the beginning, before there was anybody that, before Nasheed um, actually um, got married again. You guys had that open dialogue, correct? Correct. Oh, yeah, I can't it, too. Yeah, I can't. it was it was just because even just how we started, like I said, we used to talk about relationships. Right. When I got here with him, he had I came in as a second girlfriend. So it's you know, it's like I knew what type of person he was. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some men need um, more than one woman to balance them out. And from the beginning, that's the type of person he was. I, you can say so I came in as a second girlfriend. So from the beginning, that's what you know. I just had that open dialogue. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for now for years, for years, um, it was because you know, I, I for years it was with her in our marriage for like the first 10 years, it was like um, I, I can't see you with nobody else because I love you so much. And I'm like, man, listen here, man. He ain't say listen here, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that to you know, myself. Yeah. <laughs> like, man, but you know what? Year. And those were for me, those were those baby making years. As mm -hmm. as as you know what I'm saying? In them baby making years, I was that stay-at-home mother. I took care of home. I took and I did it damn well. Mm -hmm. But it's a job. It's a job. So just how he went to work and was tired, at the end of the day, I was tired too. So when he got home, we tag team. I'd, and that it, during those years, yeah, no, I couldn't do it. I needed him there to help with them children and what was going on in the household. Mm. Powerful point, though, and that's a powerful thing to consider. I think that was a very considerate. I mean, yeah, considerate thing. because we know, like now, you know, brothers are actually taking on second wives when their wives are pregnant and things like that. I mean, I'm not judging, oh, but yeah. that's, that's just that's more no, of a trend. Yeah, yeah, don't no no don't do that, bro. Don't do that. I mean, I'm talking to you, bro. Be, don't do that. I'm saying don't do that because I mean, she going through something, man. Like she, she going through for you. She going through something for you, and you, you want to look for another wife? Don't do that. Not, not at that stage. Like that, she can't even divorce you while she's pregnant. So why would you want to bring on another wife while she's pregnant? Don't do that, man. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, Wait a minute, Veronique, you okay? Yeah, that was that needed to be said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, what are some of the challenges of navigating a long-term relationship? Like, what are some benefits? What are some blessings of staying on this journey of marriage? Some challenges. I think for those of us that you know jump ship. So, what's the <laughs> what's the, some of the benefits and what's some of the challenges? A benefit of staying married. We are grandparenting together, y'all. Yo. My house is full of grandchildren right now. That's the benefit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they're seeing us together. Like you mm -hmm. said, it's so much divorce out there and everything. But you know what? My grandchildren, you know, just like my children, they're seeing us together. Mm -hmm. I, I would say um, having some having someone to know you uh, 20 years, 20 plus years in, uh, is a is a huge benefit because I trust her. I trust her without question. Mm -hmm. You know, I trust her. I trust her without question. So to have somebody that I can trust without question this far into a relationship, I think that's that's the benefit. That's okay. a huge benefit. Mashallah. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. V, are we good with comments? Here we go. Yeah, we had one question when we were talking about, you know, waiting to consummate the marriage. Um, somebody said, would you recommend that they stay in their respective separate homes until they consummate? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I think so. I mean, as I mean, but you can still come together like she can spend, spend the night sometimes. You can spend the night sometimes. The, the relationship can be closer. You can. A person won't be able to uh, fake out no more, like because you you're always in their space. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they won't be able to send they uh they won't be a representative. Able to, they won't be able to send a <laughs> <their> representative. <laughs> right. yeah. They won't be able to send a representative in too much. Like you know, you're gonna start to see when they wake up in the morning how cranky they are, or you know what I'm saying. You're gonna start to see the habits. You're gonna start to see some mm -hmm. habits, and it may be some things that you really you just think, can't yeah. deal with. You know, so they people they brought, like, so you're saying huh? people over without sex. I'm just making sure we clear over here. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we can do it, man. We can. I mean, to to better our uh, communities, I yeah, think absolutely, hundred percent. It, it's something that we need to really work on. See, if we don't do it, we need to, you know, put it in place so that when our children get old and start enough to marry. <laughs> um. So, so our children can put it in play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um. All right, so this is one of the things I kind of wondered about. Um, you know, marriage goes through stages, right? So, you know, the first initial stage is typically romantic stage, and I want to get your opinion on that. And then there's a stage of the marriage that's sort of disillusionment, um, distraction, and a lot of marriages don't make it through that stage. Could we talk about some of the phases or stages that you guys went through, like initially to now, like even, um, and, and how did you get through sort of the difficult years? I see us as being different from other people's marriages okay. and people like, cause with us, I swear everything just came naturally. There was no, you know, there was no sit down. I expect this, I expect that I, you know what I'm saying? We got together. You know, we weren't Muslim when um, when we took our Shahada, we got married. We just, he did what he was supposed to do as a man. He went to work, he took care of home, you know, financially everything. And I stayed at home and I took care of home. We did our jobs. I never questioned him on what he was doing. He a man, he know what to do. And he never questioned me or on what I was doing. I knew what I was doing. So we just played our role. So there was never, you know, of, looking like um he ain't doing what he's supposed to be doing he he did what he was supposed to do i did what i was supposed to do uh okay if if i would say there was actually it's a couple things that i can see that was a uh what you call it a struggle okay uh, a struggle that we got through and it was it was my fault it was you know after the kid it was women it was women i'm sorry it was you know <laughs> yeah it, it was it was it was women um the my the first marriage I went through, yeah, she, she, she told me that I should marry her, but it was still, you know, some confusion. Like it, we, yeah, we, we got real close, man. We got, we got real close. 
Um, real close. Uh, real close. You know, we, you know. Oh, we got real close to breaking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got we got real close. We got real close. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Like we got real close. Alhamdulillah, but you know the communication. We kept talking with each other. I, I think that's where the friendship kept in, kicked in. You know what I mean, like. And that's and I always say, um, you need friendship. This is why we say hold off on the sex because I'm gonna tell you why the friendship is so important. Stages of marriage, you have that lovey dovey. Oh, I'm so in love. Oh, this that. Then you have that stage of he okay, and then you have that stage of I can't stand this little. Mo oh my God, I can't stand him. Can't stand but him. you all right right now. But it's a good um, week. It's a good week. <laughs> but if you have that friendship, you deal with all them stages. You understand what I'm saying? Because I can't stand you, but you know what? That's my friend. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's my friend. Yes, we all lovey dovey. You know, people that that lovey dovey ain't all the time. It's not. It, you know what I'm saying? It's good to have. Yeah, it's good for it to bounce in and out all throughout your marriage. You know, keeping it spice it up and all of that. But then, you know, the majority of the time is you good people. This, you know what I'm saying? You good people. You enjoy each other's company, mm -hmm. and you can't do that if you're not friends. Mm -hmm. So how can you? You know, like how can you? Like look at this quarantine we're in. I hear so many people who they're going through it because they in the house with somebody they realize they don't like them. They don't like them. You need a no foundation with yeah. yeah. Friendship is so important. It's so important. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. I want to take you back for just a second. You mentioned women in general. Um, and you know, one of the things we were talking about when we were even talking about this idea of when couples have to navigate polygyny is this idea of people not being really honest about how they feel about it. So a lot of times the men may not own the fact that, hey, like I really need multiple women in my life. That's how I rolled before Islam or whatever. That's just their, their nature um, in order to maybe keep that first wife content, happy. And a lot of women aren't um, you know, th there's a lot of sort of fear in relationships as it relates to this polygyny piece. Um, and so it really revved everybody up on the Built Muslim podcast when we had this episode. So I wanted to just bring it back around to you guys. You know, how important is it for men in particular to be honest with the women that they're marrying about their feeling towards polygyny, having multiple women? How important is that honesty? Oh. Uh, it's important. Um, I'm answer for you. Right. <laughs> when they, when they, when okay. The beginning, yeah. The beginning stage, like yeah. their is on, it is it important? On their, on their intentions on having other. I mean, I, I, it's important, but I don't even think it should be have. It should be a. Uh, it should be a conversation because I'm focusing on you, like. Okay. I, I'm. For for me, I mean, because we know what Allah says, Allah says I can have four. So let's just keep that back there. We know Allah says that, but right now I, I need to focus on you. I mean, if she asks the question and you really feel like, you know, you want to have another wife, then you you tell her that. And don't dudes, listen. I'm talking to the guys right now, not y'all. Turn away, dudes. <laughs> listen. If don't don't tell a girl that oh I can only want you. I only want you. I don't want another wife. Don't, man, don't get into that. If you know your intentions, it's going to have another wife. In fact, don't even don't say that. At all. Even don't even don't say that because you may not, you may not have intention to have another wife, but it may come up. And, and now she's holding you to your word. What you say, yo, you, you said what you mm -hmm. said. Don't tell a chick that you, I'm sorry. Don't tell a sister <laughs> that, that that you don't, that you, oh, are you, you all it for me. You it, girl. Like, I don't want nothing else. That's game. That, so that five, ten years down the line. Listen, that's game that she don't want to hear. She, she, she knows it's game. I mean, it sounds good, of course, but. That's the red flag, sister. <laughs> red flag. That's that red flag we be trying to ignore. Don't, don't get into it. So and, I, well, hold on. Well, just, I mean, but there are some men that just want one woman, that's right? True. Okay. That's true. Yes, yes, there is. There is. There, there are. There are. In fact, one of them is in my book. He's fictional. <laughs> no, no, there are there are brothers who only want one, but I had a few. Don't sit here and say that because a lot knows best. You never know what five, ten years down the line brings. And in my head is, yo, you said right. There it is. You said oh, this. Oh, oh, bro, she brought. I'm telling you, she write it down. 
there's there a bro, uh, there's is a mental log of everything you say, and she gonna bring it up in the right time. She don't believe that. She gonna bring it up in the right time. That's why we don't argue, y'all. Okay. I don't forget nothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, and and, and this, I mean, I, I want to write a book about it. Women have a different language. You just got to know the language. If you know the language, you can navigate through the relationship. Dudes don't know the language. They think they can be, they can listen with a man's ear. You have to listen with a woman's ear. Like, to understand her, you have to listen with a woman's ear. It, it, it'll save you a lot of trouble, man. I, I can't expound on that because it's... It's a skill set. It's like a skill you got to develop. <laughs> but, as, but, as, but see, as women, we know this. We know men. We we always say it. Men's thinking, yo, the way they think, yo. Like, how? Where did you come up with that? From this, they thinking ain't right, and it's the same. They look at us the same way. Like, where did she come up with this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's it's about we we think differently. We created differently, and we think differently. Absolutely, subhanallah, subhanallah. Very neat. Do we have? Um, we do have a question. Um, should a man get more than one wife if he can't take care of them? Oh, we always go back to that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, okay, I'll let you answer and I'm going I'm to ask something else. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Chief. Go ahead. Oh, me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sister Doreen, go ahead. I mean, no, a man, if you can't take care of, if you cannot take care of the woman, why get another wife? I mean, if she, pro if she approaches you and says, hey, I really don't want nothing financially, but you know what? Ain't no good brothers out here. I need, I can take care of me. That's a different story. But look, that I'm gonna tell you what that look is. That look is because they'll come at you like that, brothers. They'll come at you that they don't need nothing financially. Mm -hmm. And a couple of years later, they like, bruh. And he'd be like, didn't I, didn't I tell you? I can't, I can't do nothing. You gotta know the language, man. You gotta know the language, man. So that's it's, yeah. that's one of those codes. That's so one of the can, can we can we do you mind expanding on that? So you're saying if a sister does say because this happens a lot where women will come because they maybe really want the man or whatever the case may have you and they'll forfeit their rights. Um, you're saying that that is a red flag for a brother, brother Nashi. Is that what you're saying? Or is that not communicated? No, no, no. It can be like it can be. Some sisters are, you know, they straight up with what they say. But as a man. Once you get into that relationship and you're not able to take care of your wife when she got a need, it's going to kill you. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. like it's going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. You got to call her brother to take care of something or whatever. You going to you got to deal with that as a man. And, and, and some dudes probably won't even let her, you know, brother come in and help her out. You know, that's you know, some dudes like that. But it's going to hurt you. So I, I would say if, if if that's the situation where chick or, or sister comes in and says, Yo, I, I, you know, I, I can take care of myself. I just need you to marry me. That's that's on him. Like it's it's on him. But I I, I would like really make it's the car a lot on it. <laughs> wow, that's that's deep. Um, but I also wanted to just, you know, I know we ask that question a lot about. You know, can they say, I mean, that's obviously like, you know, I mean, there's we just need to address the fact that it's, uncom it's uncomfortable for some women. They just don't want it. And that's OK. You don't have to be you know, you can choose a marriage or a brother that doesn't want to engage in it. And, you know, so I mean, I think for us, you know, kind of going back and forth of like some of these issues that I think we've already established. You know, I think the root of some of these questions is about the discomfort that there is. Do you guys feel like you're judged a lot being in a polygynist relationship? I know you probably don't care. Just care. But were you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, you know what? It, for me, um, my my other wife, like, uh, I, I think she was judged more though, and it it pissed me wow. off a lot of times where. Mm -hmm. Where she would tell me what things where sisters were saying, why why you married that sister, why you married that sister husband, and you know, people stopped talking to her because because of that, you know what I mean? Um so I and I yeah, people I think people judge us too, you know, um in the beginning, but yeah, like you say now, we don't we're 26 I years I in. Yeah, I, I ain't never cared, but um <laughs> 26 years in, man. We like they, they throwing pebbles at a I'm grown. They throwing pebbles at a, a established building. We just, that's nothing that's else. Right, that's mm -hmm. right. So call them law. That's and right. And I'm gonna tell you the sad thing: the judgment comes more from Muslim than non-Muslims. 
Mm. My coworkers, you tell them it's not, oh, okay, and just keep rolling with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But um, you always wanted to share your man. Mm. Mm. Somebody say that to you? Many times you hear that. Oh, what's so she you, at? What's you, she at? You, you so retarded. <laughs> you always wanted to share your man. But see, I don't look at it as like that. This is my household. I am the queen of my household, and I need, I need, he needs to treat me like that at all times. I keep peace in my household. My concern is my household, nobody else's household. You understand what I'm saying? And by me staying like that, I'm the queen of this castle. The king, he best to make sure I never feel anything under that. Yes, dear. <laughs> what I said about that, yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. My household. You know what I'm saying? My concern is nothing about my household where I keep peace. You know what I'm saying? What goes on elsewhere? I, to be honest, I don't care. Yeah. Everything about you, you, you get what you require out of a relationship. Whether it's just you and your husband, whether your husband got two wives or three wives, you get what you require. Mm. So if we ain't requiring much, ladies, we're not going to get much. Mm. That's what you require. Damn, darn you. <laughs> I right, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because if we're not requiring, I'm telling you, whatever a man is giving you, you're allowing that. Mm -hmm. You are allowing that. So guess what? That's what you require. He's not going to give more because you're not requiring more. Get what you you're gonna get out of relationship what you require. I, that really okay, okay, okay. It, 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 no, it needs to sink in. I'm it trying to really, help y'all out, bros. You going needs in, to dog. Sink in. Because if we're not a, um requiring a lot, you said, right. that already. you said that already. Yo, I know a sister she told me <laughs> very important point. <laughs> this sister told me one time she was like, he came and um the light bill was due. And um, she said, oh, they're going to cut him off. You need me to light a candle. She wasn't going to help because I require you to take care of me financially. That if you can, I'm going to light a candle because you ain't getting none of my money. I mean, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but in the I mean, in relationships, you know, you want to, it's nothing wrong with helping out. But I, this, that's what she required. And, I, and she had the money to do it. You see what I'm saying? But what did that do? That made him step up because he wasn't going to be in the dark and made him go do what he had to do. Absolutely. You all right? You all right? You made it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, man. Listen, bro. I, I ain't even talk. I, yo, I try to stop when she just going off, man. She going to start a revolution with that talk, man. But it's true, brother. She, you know it's the truth. Because I know you have daughter. You know, you have a daughter. So you would give her the same game. Mm -hmm. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sister, I'm very neat. Do we have anything you want to bring in before we? No, you can go ahead. Okay, cool. Um, all right, you guys. So, so far as with, I wanted to ask this to Brother Nasheed for just a second because I think, Sister Doreen, you hit on something so powerful in the aspect of women. But for men, Brother Nasheed, um, what are some really? Oh, wait, oh, let me, let me, let me. Um, what are some ways that you think men often go wrong in marriages as it relates to, um, you know, caretaking their wives, treatment of their wives, divorcing their wives? Like, where do you think sort of the disconnect is with some of the brothers that make a wrong turn in their marriage? Stubbornness. Okay. Okay, listen. Okay, I'm gonna talk to the dudes right quick. Listen, your wife is a piece of what Jenna was. Your wife is a piece of what heaven was. She she's that reminder that you could have what you could have when you get to Jenna. But we're not in Jenna. This is not Jenna. Uh, here we have to work, and I think that's what a lot of dudes get into a relationship. And they want to be waited on hand and foot. They stop working. They they stop working in the relationship. I mean, when I say working, um, you know, helping with the kids. Uh, yeah, you do, you do, you you provide. That's true. 
But when you come home, understand, you know, if, if things ain't right, help her out. Help her with the kids. Take the kids out. Um, help her with the dishes. Do the dishes. It's it's a lot says it's you. It's about faith and action. Like you have to work. You have, have got to have faith, but you have to also be working. So I, I would suggest that dudes, um, you know, uh, do like the Prophet Sallam did. He helped his wives in the home. That's that's what he did. He's the best example that we have. And uh, he he what he, he didn't. There was a night at a time where he was just chilling. You know, as as when he was in the home, his wives loved to have him in the home. Um, were yeah, I, I, and I think uh, the stubbornness is where uh, a lot of us a lot of us go wrong. We don't want to budge on what we think is right, and uh, it, it 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 tears a relationship apart. And what about the romantic aspect of Nashi? Because I see it we can connect with this in a lot of Muslim marriages where, you know, I mean, you see it all, a lot in the non-Muslim world where romance is a big part of, you know, that relationship. But when we get married, I don't know. It just seems to be, is it really important or do you feel like it's? Oh, it's important. You gotta, you gotta put game down. Well, okay, so I, I guess we, 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 had, we went through, we went through something early in our relationship, right? So, and um, I went to my dad and I talked to him. He said, hey, man, you just got to put your game down, man. You just got to you just got to put your game down. So when I put my game down, he he tapped the kids for me and I took her out on a date. You know, I took. Her. So, yeah, I think dating is is fun. Like every now and then you have things that's just going to try to come to get into the relationship. But you have to real you have to show her that you are involved with her. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Like you got the family, of course, but you have to take time for her and she has to see that. Yeah, so I think romance is a part of it. A romance is like very important in the relationship. Off, you know, you know, you can't, it's not gonna happen all the time. And I think, you know, women need to understand that, but it needs to happen. You know, it needs to happen. Okay, absolutely. I mean, even, even take going, you know, renting a hotel for the weekend. Right. Kids, right. rent a hotel for the weekend. Just get away. Do something new. Right, right. downtown. Like you ain't got to go to another state. Go right downtown. Get a nice hotel downtown. Just, just for you and her. Yeah. Yeah. Goes yeah. A long way. That goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, like that. That's that's important. Yeah, it really is. V, we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna see if we can debunk some myths. Um, I wanted to ask um, a couple of. Um, marriage myths. If you you're just gonna say whether you agree or disagree, and you can give some context to it. Um, so true or false? Do you believe that having common interests keep couples together? False. False. Okay. False. Really? Okay. You can be totally opposite and not. I'm a poet, right? Like, well, in the '90s, like early '90s, 2000s, I was like a poet. Like, I was really into poetry. You know what I mean? And it was my it was my getaway. It right. was my getaway. You know, it was my getaway, my escape. And she was okay with it. Like she was cool with me writing poetry and everything. Like she was okay with it. Um, and I guess because I was into it a lot, you know, it made her get into it. She started writing poetry and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. She don't know this, but when she started coming to the to the to the things with me, I felt I felt my space was being intruded. Like I, I didn't want you there. <laughs> this is my space. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. <laughs> I, ain't I ain't say nothing. I didn't say nothing because she was writing and and uh she was having a ball with it. Like she was really getting she got this one poem, y'all. Yo, it's Guess funny. That. Like she she really is <laughs> so, you're, so you're basically saying that because we talk about compatibility a lot. So you're saying that you don't really feel like having those similar interests is necessary to have a successful marriage. That's your no. okay. No. Got it. Okay. Okay, this what about this one? Never going never go, going to bed angry allows for couples to settle their issues immediately and effectively. So we always hear that advice before we get married, never go to bed angry. Agree or disagree? Uh, uh, Really? I done hated her guts when going to bed sometimes. <laughs> I promise you that. Bad advice. Yeah. That, that advice isn't. In... Because, let me tell you something. I, and I think maybe art, this is a reason why arguments don't happen is 
Stop thinking, stop thinking you got the answer right. Think about it. Let's think, let's, let's weigh your options. You know, you don't, is it real? Is it really worth arguing over? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Weigh it. I mean, don't, well, I always say don't sweat, don't sweat the small stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Weigh your options. So then, it, and then answering too quick, that's where that anger, you trying to hurt somebody. Man, when you think about it and then, you know, you could you could talk about it the next morning and it ain't even as serious as it was when you went to bed. Nah, nah, nah. We don't even talk about it. Be like, hey, you want something to eat? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't even say that. You just put the plate there. <laughs> you hungry? <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I appreciate that. Right. Get up. You, you praying? <laughs> <laughs> This is important one. All right. Um, so our affairs, infidelity, are typically the main source of divorce or marital issues. Do you, I mean, and this you're asking based on your own perspective and experience, not expert. Um, my own perspective and what I see? No. No. Okay. It's, false, false, false. Infidelity is not a big issue. I mean, oh, it's, it a big is, issue. Oh, it's a big issue. Mm. It is a big issue, but I don't think that's the main reason why people get divorced. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm you seeing I'm, what I'm noticing is it's the attention. People it's fall. The, yeah. People just fall out of uh, it's the attention. So if I, if you, if you're not paying me no mind, then yeah, they fall out of love with you, huh? Not falling out of love. You just you grow apart or you just have start having different interests. interests. Yeah. You just, yeah, you fall, you fall okay. out. You're saying a, you're saying attention, lack of attention from spouses to one another is yeah. got it, got it. The real now, one finances, finances. That's yep. really one of the big to me. I I see the biggest. That's yep. a big one. Yeah, that's a that's a huge. One. I think that's, 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 that's bigger, bigger than infidelity. That's bigger yeah. than infidelity. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. You feel like marriage, Muslim marriages can bounce back after infidelity. Muslim marriages. Yeah, Ooh. because. I mean, we understand what the punishment is, so we ain't, but. Right. <laughs> um, From, well, I guess it's, I guess it's different thoughts on it because I was always taught that we know what the punishment is. So guess what? How can I be married to you if you're dead? So that means my, my marriage. So, I ain't going to laugh, but oh gosh, I never heard of that. Right. My, my, my marriage is over. So right. there is no marriage after that. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, so. Ah, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, you gotta make up a powerful point. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, so I mean, I kind of asked this, but just maintaining romantic love is the key to marital happiness over the lifespan for most couples. True yeah. or false? True. Romantic love, even through that last phase when it's more like companionship and friendship, is the romance yeah. still okay? All right. And this yeah. is one that I think we often believe as women. Um, having kids brings couples closer. Ooh, mm -mm, mm, 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 mm. It doesn't. No, it's a huge misconception. It's oh. a very huge misconception. We think that that baby gonna make a um a relationship work. No, no, no. it's not. Mm. Nashi, you disagree, brother Nashi? You disagree? I I didn't know. Like I don't. Um. I mean, I like you a lot more if you have a baby. I'm saying. <laughs> I can't have your husband to read. I just like. How did y'all get through quarantine? Y'all got through it well. Yeah. Yo, man, I I really like her. Yeah, I guess we realize we really like each other because I mean. Yeah, I really like her. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all right. <laughs> had a ball. Y'all had a good time during quarantine. Yeah, mashallah. I whip, I, I whip them in cards and stuff, you know. Why are you bringing up old stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that. All right, let's see if we can. Do you have any other, um, Bernie, audience? We don't have any questions. More like, um, you know, comments agreeing. Said if it's not good already, it won't make it better if you have kids. We'll see. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and we talked about that, you know, most of the time when there's uh, seeking someone else, it's when the woman is pregnant. So that's not. That's a new trend though, Barry. Well, I don't know. I think it's a new trend. Is it new or is it because I see a lot of a lot of people that I know have issues in their marriage or infidelity issues or polygyny or whatever that those issues are when they're pregnant. So I don't But it's like is the baby gonna fix that? Is that like are you expecting the baby to fix those issues? 
No, they expected him to be broke from having more kids, so he won't get another wife. <laughs> I'm, just, hey, hey, hey. I'm just saying, I, I done, I done heard, you know. Mm -hmm. So what are some final point pieces of advice? And, and what I would like is, this is how I would like for you to frame it. Doreen, if you can give some advice, just final piece of advice to the sisters, to the wives. And, and Brother Nashi, if you can give a final piece of advice to the husbands, and then I don't know if you have anything collective for couples together, but if you could just give that like final tidbits. My tidbit is don't sweat the small stuff. Everything mm -hmm. is not worth an argument. If you do, disagreements is okay, but it doesn't mean you have to argue. I don't, you know, arguing with somebody that you got to sleep with every night, it's not worth it. it. It's that will tear a relationship apart. And like I says, require, what you require is what you will get. Don't require the, the, the bare essentials. You want to be treated like a queen, require it. Hmm. One shot, love, sister. <laughs> um, for relationships, you know, I can only talk to the dudes. Um, yeah. Like I, like I told, I, I, my advice would be, you know, don't, don't get into the relationship expecting to be, you know, um, weighted on hand and foot. Keep working, man. Keep working. Work, work like you by yourself. I mean, she may not like it. Like that's how I do. I try not to. This. I think something wrong with my thinking, right? This is what I do, right? Like I try not to leave, when I take off my clothes, like I really try to put them away because, because I don't, because I don't want her to do it. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't. That's weird. Are you saying that's not what you're thinking? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, because I don't, I, when I, I put my, like, I just put my clothes away or I hang my towel up or, I try to pick up after myself. I when I cook, I wash the dishes, and I do those things because I'm 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 alone in my mind, but I know she's here, and she wants to. Like she's from the old school. Actually, both of my wives are. They from the old school where they want to take care of me, right? They want to do things for me, but in my mind, I have to work. I have to keep working, meaning take care of myself and do things for her at the same time. And I think it makes. It makes our relationship better because I'm not. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I try not to be a hassle. Okay. Is that important? That's very important, brother. Yeah, I think it's important. I, I just think it's important. Like, yeah, keep working, brothers. Just keep working, man. She ain't your slave. Now, how? What about marital intimacy? I don't think you touched on that. Um, how important to make sure that's maintained all the times? We know people go through, you know, dry spells and stuff, but. How important is it to maintain that marital intimacy? Oh, it's it's important. It's important. Um, it was a lot more when we were younger. That's why all them kids were there. <laughs> we were the deep details, brother the chief. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we good though, like you know what I'm saying, and that's that's another part for the friendship because when that ain't happening, when you go through that. Dry spell, as you say, you know, you got that friendship to mm -hmm. to help you out. Like you can really talk to, them. you can play cards with them. Y'all can read together. You know what I mean? And while we talk, man, prayer is important. We Thank pray you. together, man. Like for real. Like yeah. you know, encouraging each other to pray. Um, we yeah, we we walk to the salat together. We pray together. That that I think that's really important. Um, for your with your spouse, really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep that up. Man. Keep that up. Powerful, powerful. I have a couple of questions in the comments. Um, Brother Akil said, this is for you, Brother Nasheed. He said, what is the best way for a young elder to seek marriage? A young elder. Brother <laughs> Nasheed, so, you're supposed to be laughing at our audience members. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, young elder. I'm sorry, young elder. Um, I, I don't know. Um, what? Oh, go down to the touch. They got some good, good women down there. Good, 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 good clean, women. good, clean women. I can't leave them. <laughs> how did, how did it? No, seriously, because there, there is difficult as brothers mature and they start over. They've been divorced and maybe they, you know, they want to choose a, a really compatible match. What are some people just assume it's so easy for brothers? But that's not from what I'm hearing from some brothers ever since I started this podcast. Is that's not really true. 
for a lot of brothers. I don't, it's a difficult time finding wives. Like I told you, I'm, I'm talking from within a marriage, so I don't, but I always say that, that um, I, I would, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be single for too long. Like, I just, I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> I, I would, I would, I mean, as far as like date, there's dating sites you can go to. Um, uh, there's the event, you know, with Muslim sisters there. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm talking from within a marriage, so I, don't, I really don't know. You don't how. have sex for that. Brother, I feel he's telling you holler at everybody. That's what all of them, the, all of them, <laughs> all of them. Get, uh, hey man, listen, hey, contact me, Akil. I got you. I got you. Don't worry about it. I got you. It makes it seem like it's just we just going after any old sister. That's we're not doing that, are we? Okay. Okay, so listen. <laughs> you come at me, brother Najid. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, it's just I ain't gonna say it because it's gonna put a damper on the whole show. So I ain't gonna not. come on. We love we love we love when it takes a turn, brother. All right, so I was um this was when we was in Florida, right? And um because we from Florida. And there was a brother who would come to Fadja every morning. Okay. Come to Isha every night. Had a nice house, had big cars. The Imam was he was the Imam's friend, right? The Imam was like, yo, we gotta get you married, man. And the Imam stepped in and got him married. Okay. Two years later, I'm at the mass shit and he comes with his wife that the Imam got him married to. And I just happened to walk in on these words. He hasn't had sex with me in two years. Okay. Come to find out he like little boys. Oh. Okay. Right. I mean, that's it. So the she next one. So you're saying that, so you're saying that the, bre okay, explain that to me, because I'm, I'm not sure if I'm connecting it to what you, the point you're trying to make. What I'm saying is when uh, brothers got to get married in the, in the community and, you know, for me to hook a brother up, I don't, because the sister, it, it took her through a lot, you know what I'm saying, to go through that. Like it took her through a lot to that. Like she's, it took her a while to get over that. And, um, yeah. What he's saying is he's not giving no, he's not hook, helping right. nobody get hooked up with nobody for oh, six because of that. Because I of that like that, I'm not going to, I'm not giving you a, no advice on how to go hook up with a woman or vice versa. You know, I'm not, he's not. I got you now. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. All right. All right. Let me it traumatized me for a long time, man. You know, like, so. So when it comes to like hooking people up, yeah, hooking people up or yeah, I just it and then at the same time, you know, that's what that's what I'm saying. Like it it for our is our community is so disconnect that we can't hold each other accountable. Like who we married this dude to a lady and he like little boys. Now he he was he was gay or he was a molester. You know what I mean? Oh, it did damper, damper the show, but no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I appreciate it. No, it's, really, it's a really good, no, really seriously. It's a very good reflection, and this happens more. Unfortunately, this happens more than we would like to admit. So I appreciate you saying that, but now she ain't keeping it real. Erin, what's the question? Um, Sister Tiffany said, how did polygyny work during quarantine? Yeah. Wow. Um, oh, going in. Okay. Y'all yes, sure don't want to, as that might be personal. No, it, it's it's not personal. Um, uh, we was in a situation. I just, you know, when I could, I, I when I could, um, I, I basically stayed here. Um, uh, my, my wife, she had uh, a daughter move going in and out uh, sometimes, so we was, you know, scared. Everybody just quarantined. We just stayed in the house. You know what I mean? And then I, I had a daughter going in and out, and I didn't want to take if anything over there. So, yeah. Um, that was tough. Okay. Um, yeah, it was a tough time. It was a tough time. But alhamdulillah, man. I'm, man, I got some wonderful wives. 
This is I got mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> oh gosh. Brother Lukman said, Do you think ego destroys marriages, not just men? Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Ego. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I, I think it does. Um, especially with women too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I do. I agree. Okay. <laughs> I disagree. I'm sorry, Sabri. I'm sorry. Oh no, I'm fine. I think he wanted you to expand on the woman piece. It sounded like I could be wrong. I know, I know. It sounded like um, I can't even expound on it. I can't expound on it. It's just I disagree with it. it yeah, I think it 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 affects everybody. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You and that's the thing. Yeah, I think you have to be humble in a relationship. Of, of course, you have to be humble. Um. Yeah, you just got to be home. Okay. Yeah, that was it. Just uh, people wanted you to shout out your shirt and um, oh, some, challenges, yeah. some challenges on spades for you all when you guys come back to the comments, inshallah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, so my this is uh, Sajood. Move in Sajood. a little bit. Okay, yeah, I see it. Uh-huh. We submit to you. It's my company name. Okay. Oh. It's my company name. The shirt was done by Kwame, Kwame Nation. Yeah, he, it's, it's my logo. It's my company and my logo. Y'all see what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's Make It Sajou. Make It Sajou. Okay. Yeah. With, with Africa, with Africa and the United States, African American. Oh, no, I didn't see that one. Okay. Nice. Nice. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so you guys also have other shirts, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, we have other shirts, my, my, uh, we, you know, we was, um, Black Dads Matter, we was into this, uh, you know, the, um, Black Lives Matter movement, we was into, you know, all got shirts for all of that, um, yeah, yeah, we still have a website everywhere. or anything where people could buy them, or? No or website, there? no website right now, no website right now, but we are. You could just holler at me. You take orders, yeah. She taking orders, you know. Just send her what you want, and she gets it for you, inshallah. Okay, so we'll tag the Doreen under there, un underneath the comments. But I want to just thank you guys for coming on and being so honest about you know your situation and being authentic and just kind of offering us some real insight and advice to this journey of marriage that you guys are on. We appreciate you. Thank you. I, I hope I hope we you know help helped you out a little bit. Um, I hope well, we work. I hope you home a main point for me, which is the friendship. Uh, that, that, that was, yeah, that's a piece I've been missing. I mean, you know, that I just wanted confirmation about. <laughs> so, so I appreciate you for that. Good, good, good. Thank you for having us for real, for real, yeah, for real. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, audience members, for tuning in. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Please continue to share it and offer comments under it. Um, and you know, tap into support. We want you to support. Please go on Amazon and get Her Justice. You can put it in there. That is the book written by Brother Nasheed. And also, um, we'll tag Sister Doreen for the T-shirt. Support, you know, our Muslim brothers and sisters. Support Black businesses is very important during this time. So please continue to do so. Veronique, thank you so much for rocking with us today. I appreciate you, girls. Hey, oh, Enjoyed it. Just like a All right, you guys, this has been another episode of the Dope Muslim Woman podcast. We don't return until next Saturday. We are going to be addressing um, something very important, uh, which is the school to prison pipeline. Black boys don't cry. cry. Um, so we are going to be dealing with that next Saturday. So we have a little bit of a week off. Inshallah, I'll connect with you guys soon. Thank you so much. And assalamu alaikum. Wow, like Bye,